All right, welcome into episode 88 of Coffee and Shell. Look at us, production value. If you're watching on uh, via YouTube, we got a nice new overlay. We look uh, we look pretty fresh, fellas. Uh, today we got a big show. As you can see, we are going to discuss Leakgate. We're also going to go over Team of the Year. We're we'll talking about Hutverse. And uh, a little bit of the All-Star Open as the NHL World Championship kind of kicks off. Uh, as we always do, we will discuss our time as 30-year-old married dads uh, because there are not enough of those in the community. So, uh, fellas, we'll start with uh, – Stu, you're going to talk a lot in this episode. So we'll start with Brent. How, was, uh, how, how have you been in terms of uh, the dad life? Not bad. Okay. Um, basically, the – taking down all like the crap in my house just trying to, i did like a huge house clean and like okay. you know when you like you're like going to your house and you're like so uncomfortable with like there's shit everywhere Bro. because of the kids it is painful like there's like toys like spread everywhere where every room is kind of messed up from the kids and i was like all right i need to i need to deal with this and i think every single dad goes through it's like on a monthly basis where if you don't do like a deep clean you just it's just you're just always grumpy it's always just low-key walk in the bathroom you see there's like toys in the tub you're like ah you walk in the living room there's stuff on your couch you're like oh my god i can't sit there and then you go into your bed and there's still there's like crumbs in the bed from your kid deciding to eat chips in there it's like okay man i need to fix this so i went like eight hours straight just plugged in a podcast in my ear and just went i so i love productive. that Dude, uh, so recently, since the new year, um, I have, like, now realized, obviously, my wife has a lot more to deal with, right? And I have, like, massive OCD, it seems. Because if when anything is, like, out of, like, in the area that I can see that is messy, instant bad mood. But, like, the drawer, the drawer, that can be an absolute disaster. My wife is one of those people that the drawer has to be completely immaculate, but everything around it can be a disaster, so after like the last like four months of like my kid being born, um, you know, obviously she has less time to like do the, that, that normal stuff. So I was like, okay, you know what? Every morning clean as I go, I wake up at seven, make my coffee and I just clean everything that's in the open area. And it's been therapeutic. So it's just funny that you say that because I'm in total agreement. It, it like, it's like when you're a kid and you come home and no matter how bad of a day at school you have, but if your bed was made, it's like instantly not that bad. You know, like, yeah, it, like exactly. it's like it's the smallest thing you can do to limit a potentially bad day from becoming a awful day. So I'm, I'm in complete. It's also, if you, if you do like a little bit per day, yep. it's like it's I end up going through ruts where I just like let it like. Oh, yeah. Up or, and then and it gets to the point where it's so bad that you just shut your brain down. You're like, mm -hmm. this is so bad. I just don't even want to deal time. with it. And then eventually it's so bad that you're like, I have to address this because it's like staring you in the mm -hmm. face. You're like, I need to fix this disaster. It's, it's why it's always good to have like that one like random like family, like bi-weekly, like, you know, you know, like where you got to pretend like your house is more clean than it is when, just because you have a random family member or a friend come over. Those are always the best to keep yeah. the house clean. That, or when the house cleaner is about to come to the house, you have to clean it, like the pre-clean for the cleaner. Oh, dude, how good has this podcast been? <laughs> what, you have a cleaner? <laughs> okay. Every, okay. If you get one. It, for me, it's it's ninety dollars every two weeks. She comes in for two to three hours, and she just deep cleans like the bathroom and the kitchens, and does like a clean of like the floors and all that. And it's like it's a game changer. It's like the best ninety bucks I can spend because everything is because like think about it, if you're not like a super like I'm not a big cleaner guy. I like if I I will end up letting my bathroom turn into a low-key like kind of scummy mess well that's every and guy with the kids like well i mean with like my nine-year-old he's notorious for missing the toilet oh, you it's know like once in a while yeah, yeah, like, yeah. i'm like buddy can you please take a piss sitting down when <laughs> it's the middle of the night instead of just going you know what we're gonna just if we get 75 percent in there where we we did a good enough job <laughs> that's a b <laughs> it's a b in school <laughs> Stu, do you have a cleaner no, our, our good pal Larsonus does. I know that. He he has to come every week. Oh, man, Larsy is a mess. All right, well, what did you do this past week? Uh, not too much. Uh, Other than stir up the entire NHL community. I had, I know. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Just just kind of hung around. We're, we're still kind of just trying to get everyone back to normal. I, I finally, I think, shook the cough a little bit. I'm, I'm not coughing as much, so that's good. So 
How are the kids? Are they not sick anymore? They're, they're, yeah, they're doing they're doing better. He's he's still a little bit congested, but they said that'd be normal. So yeah, not, nothing nothing too crazy. So so a week ago, my kiddo like they don't breathe through. I didn't also didn't know this. Kids don't breathe through their mouth for like the first like large portion of their life. I guess they only breathe through their nose. I get like that's normal or whatever. Oh, my wife was talking. To me. I don't I know. That's what my wife told me. She could be completely made up. But I, from my understanding, for like the first majority of like the first year, they and so my kiddo smiley as ever completely normal but like man you could hear it be like you know just struggling a little bit i'm like oh no and sure enough he got the sniffles and first time he's been sick sure enough my wife gets sick and now i am battling through it but yo so we went away my wife for christmas got me like a a night out at this it's, it's called millcroft and it was in this like creepy ass like mountain town about an hour away from toronto and very nice, but very vintage. And I have now come to realize that not my jam. So it had like, it was like, so middle of winter, obviously. It had like two like hot spring pools. And then uh, our room had like our own hot tub and stuff. So it was very nice. But it was like there was more people working there than people that were like staying there. And it was just like, it felt like a horror movie and everyone's in on it. Like I was going to get murdered. Very creepy vibes. The spa, we had a couple's <laughs> massage. And I just like... I'm like, why is no one in this building? This creepy, weird ASMR music's freaking me out. Like, I kept telling my wife, like, I'm like, this is creepy. And like, either I don't know, maybe it's my, 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 like, ADD, and like, I don't like the music and everyone being silent and actually having to deal with my thoughts. I don't know what it was, but I was just not. Oh, I was on edge. And then <laughs> it's so not quite therapeutic. No, and then you know, like, we go for dinner. It's great, like, great meal. Very swanky, stupidly expensive, and um. It was so dark that you like, couldn't see. It's like one of those. Like, I don't know. Just it, just you know, it is what it is. But then, man, it's like, it was like The Shining, right? That's what. It, yes, it was very much like that. Yeah. So beautiful place, but just not my vibe. And man, we just drank way too much, and <laughs> uh, I can't do that anymore. Can't hang. So yesterday was a write off. We would have recorded this the night before, but I was hungover and sick, and now uh, you know here we are. So. Uh, that let's... picture says a thousand words. Oh yeah, yeah. That dude. I went to bed. At, I sent it to you like eight p.m. I was immediately asleep right after that. I woke up at seven this morning. So, um, yeah. No, everything's good though. My kiddo. We, we took him to the doctor's today because like my wife won't, and I'm like, because she's always like, no, we're not taking the doctor. There's nothing wrong. Everything's fine. But I was like, after seven days, we're going. Took him today. Doctor literally goes, why did you like? Why did you bring him? He just says like, like he's completely fine. He's like smiling and laughing. Like everything's good. And I'm just that paranoid parent. But, um, anyways. So uh, we're good. Now we will get into the uh, segment of the show that you know, a large majority, the Twitch community is definitely waiting for, and that is Leakgate. So one of us, not the person who was involved in any sort of Team of the Year media, uh, decided to announce who Team of the Year was prior to it launching, and it was not me. And it <laughs> stirred up everyone in the community. So let's go. I don't even know how to handle this. Stu, let's do... Uh, a timeline and what actually happened. Say, tell us the story. Like, yeah. Stewie is a storyteller. So let's just, <laughs> let's just we'll be quiet for a minute. And we'll let you go. People that hate me on Reddit and that there's apparently a decent amount of them, but I we guess this is my, this is my, uh, my baptism to Reddit. So, mm -hmm. um, sleeves so always gave me horror stories about it, but <laughs> the thing, the main thing I have an issue with Reddit real quick is, is you're a absolute. <laughs> if you sit there and you <laughs> are on a murder dude and you're and you're a you're on a burner account and you sit there and like talk and, and get like personal and like act like you know me act like you know sleaze act like you know brent you don't and you don't know anything i talk to sleaze every freaking day i talked mm -hmm. to him before team of the year i i told i tell him everything so anybody that acts like i'm like a, you know like you know something's going on you don't and, and like if you're gonna chirp get on your real account you know who you are like so i'll leave it at that um, <clears throat> so I don't know. This goes back like, uh, so me and Sleaze before Brett joined the podcast, we were supposed to have Mike Engelhart come on, which Sleaze ended up doing. And I was supposed to be a part of it. And me and Clappy, obviously there's some history there where nothing really, there's not really no history. It's just, he didn't really like me. <laughs> and I talked about this and that's fine. Um, you know, he, he kind of had some he had some buddies who were in the community that I used to not really get along with. And it's one of those things where it's like, you know, if you don't like somebody and you trash them and you never really get to meet them, that's like your instant impression of them. So that's fine. I understand. So, um, you know, Clappy never got to know me. So long story short, Clappy didn't allow me to come on the podcast with Sleeves. We were going to have a coffee and chat with Mike. 
obviously I asked like what I did. Sleeves asked what I did. He didn't really give an answer. He kind of just blew it off. Sleeves even went to Vegas with him, had dinner with him, never came up. I got a little irritated by it. <laughs> I felt like I was getting blackballed a little bit for nothing. I, I wanted just like something to show like what I did. I've never been racist, homophobic, um, go down the list of bad things you could do. And I felt like I'd done nothing to deserve not to be able to do a interview that was going to be pre-recorded and they would have vetted everything and released it. And I felt like I just got screwed over on it and it was dumb. And he didn't even give sleeves a real good reason. So I, it, was, it was basically, he said that I leaked goalie fatigue. And that goes back to the issue that I had with the whole thing before. I put out a tweet before the season started. I said, are we really focusing on goalie fatigue when we have so many other issues with the game? And what do you know? Let's fast forward to where tonight is January 11th. I think we all agree that goalie fatigue is annoying. And there is other penalties, though. (laughs) Yes. In in general. (laughs) There's a lot of issues in the game that I think goalie fatigue is being a priority was annoying. But whatever. New back of the box feature. Great. Okay. Um, He didn't like that. He said, you know, it, it, it annoyed him because they were launching the game. Okay. I found out about goalie fatigue because a game changer who he handpicked and made sign an NDA, told somebody else who told me. I know it sounds very like childish and like middle schoolish. Well, fast forward to the team of the year. I end up finding out from the same guy from that game changer that told him who the team of the year was. So I text my buddy, no sleeves over here. I say, hey, this is the team of the year. Sleeve says, I have no clue who it is. And anybody out Actually, there. I said you're I, wrong. I said there's yeah, no and, way well, that's no, it. No, no, no. Yeah, but then you said you're wrong like the second time. I said, yes, it is. And you said, no, you're wrong. So, I Sleaze has been telling me, Brent, anybody that can even... I'm sure he did on your stream. He doesn't know who the team of the year is. He wanted to do the, the content with Arda Ocal, and he wanted an organic interview, um, you know, like, or an organic, like, you know, reactions, all that stuff. I got it, whatever. Um, so, like I said, I, I said, this is it. He said, no, it's not. So, I texted Matthew Kachuk. I skated with him in St. Louis. That's so Brady. funny. You just went to the source. <laughs> And, and like any, and this idiot on there too, that's talking about like name dropping. It's like, well, what do you want me to say? Do you want me to like make up? Like uh, you asked for credibility. I'm giving you credibility. You want me to say that I like, I texted a guy that, that wears number 19 that plays for the Florida Panthers. Like, like what name drop. Okay. It's Matthew Kachuk. Texted him, asked him. And, you know, and I said, I said, good luck tonight against Vegas. I said, take it easy on Petro. Cause we skate together in the summertime Petro. And he said, LOL. Thanks. And he goes, yeah, their team's going to get it tonight. It should be an absolute war. And then that was it, and I knew right away, okay, he really did get it. Which, if you go back on podcast episodes, I've been saying for months, I think Kachuk should get it. I think Kachuk should get it. Everybody told me crazy because they said he had a bad year. <laughs> well, I told Sleaze, hey, I'm going to leak this, and I'm going to show Clappy what a real leak is because he called me a leaker when, A, I'm not a game changer. Somebody on Reddit said I'm a game changer. I'm not a game changer. I don't get paid by EA. I don't make content to make money for EA. I do nothing for EA. I'm my own dude. So let's get that clear. I said, I'm going to show him what a real leak is. And I tweeted it and it kind of like caught fire. I felt bad. I didn't, the way I worded it, I guess I worded it wrong. I shouldn't have said a game changer because then everyone thought I was talking about sleeves who I, in my mind, I forget is a game changer because I view sleeves as just like my buddy who happens to be like the biggest content creator in the community. Um, It kind of caught storm sleeves is getting a lot of crap. So I go home, I double down. I go, okay, let's go live. I go live. My stream gets more viewers than I've ever gotten probably organically ever. Um, I'm just sitting there pretty much crapping on Clappy the whole time because like I said, like childish, okay, whatever. Everyone, you know, chirp me for that. That's fine. I'm childish about it, but I'm more of like an eye for an eye. I'm just old school. It's like, if you want to, you know, you want to start crap, I'm like, I'll finish it. And uh, yeah, so Sleaze comes to my stream. Some of you guys saw this. He said, end the stream, call me. Sleaze tells me, hey, Clappy wants to talk to you. I said, okay. And he goes, if you ever want to talk to him, here's your chance. I said, well, what's he going to say? He wants me to take down the tweet. He goes, no, just talk to him. I go, okay, fine. So I get on the phone with Clappy. We talk for an hour. You know, we, we kind of bury the hatchet. He, he basically, long story short, I'm not going to get into every little detail, but he says like, he apologizes for not allowing me on the episode. Um, he says he should have done it. We're cool. No big deal. You know, he said that it was childish and that's it. And I respect him for that. Like I said, okay. And then hopefully now going forward, there's more of a, you know, two-way street. We can, you know, get things going here. We can get some interviews here. And and that was it. That's all I wanted before. Like, if he would have just came to me months ago and been like, hey, like, I, I don't, you know, I don't want you on for this reason, that reason. It was just nothing. And it was just, and he, and he did admit to me in a roundabout way on the phone. Like, I kind of, like, got it out of him. 
that yes, yeah, some of it was just bad, like just his buddies bad mouthing him. And that's like what my buddies would do. If my buddy said, like, oh, this no sleeves guy, he's a loser, and I don't know sleeves at all, I'd be like, okay, that no sleeves guy's a loser. I mean, whatever. That's I understand that's like how people think, but um, you know, and some of it was like a little bit of like a vendetta almost. That's what I felt like. And I didn't like that. And Sleaze, and me and Sleaze kind of argued about that for the last few months. I was like, dude, it's a vendetta. He's like, no, I don't think it is. I don't, I'm like, dude, I'm telling you, I think it's a vendetta. So that's fine. Whatever. I think we bury the hatchet. I think we're good now. Um, yeah. And like anybody out there, let me make this hundred percent clear. I shouldn't have said it probably the way I did with like, you know, saying that it was a game changer could have made Sleaze look bad, but anybody out there that thinks I was trying to sabotage Sleaze or ruin his stream, or ruin his life, or how big, how bad of a friend I am. I talked to Sleaze before I did it. I literally try to help Sleaze with stuff, like, if he needs it all the time. Like, I literally told him I'd fly out and do stuff for, like, content for him, whatever, like, to help him out. Like, I'm not a bad friend. So it's like, anybody that says that is, like, clueless. Like, and I knew he was going to get two or 3,000 viewers the next day. It was going to be okay. He's okay, everyone, okay? He woke up the next day. You know, it's like, it's a virtual cart. We're going to be doing the same thing in 12 months. We're going to be going, oh, McDavid's getting the team of the year again. Oh, and it may be Dreisaitl, and it may be McKinnon. It's the same players. whoop de doo And that's one thing. I, oh, I'm not going to go that. But anyways, like, um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's a little frustrating reading, just reading some of the false stuff, though. That that did bug me. And no, I know that's, that's Reddit. Bro. I mean, like, that that's, you, dude, you got to trial by fire on what Reddit's like. A lot of no, it, a lot of it, a lot of it, a lot of uh, that stuff, at least online, is just uh, people wanting like drama and stuff, you know. 100%. And you asked for like maybe you, you, you the way that you've handled, like you asked for it too. But uh, no, I mean you know it is what it is, you know. And uh, I'm surprised in the way that it finished. I'll be honest, with you, I could not believe that that was the team of the year. I yes. read your message back and I said, bro, there's no way that is it. For anyone, yeah, wondering this year, game changers or not game changers, the creators. We get like media kits, like like you would for the to to do um, like uh, promotion and stuff when like the deep dives come out and stuff like that. Like we all get it, so we can make videos that when the embargo lifts, so we can whatever. And I didn't even have that. I didn't even have a pre-recorded video. It wasn't until like 10 p.m. that night where I was like, "All right, might as well send it to me," like <laughs> so I can make a yeah. video the next day. I had no idea because I was, uh, yeah. The, we did. A, I did a video with Arda, and before it, I was like, "I, me and Arda were like, yeah, let's just not know." That way, when we we do our predictions or whatever, there's no like, you know, oh, I think it could be this guy. We, and if you go watch it, we didn't say Miro. We didn't even mention Kachuk. <clears throat> oh. um, and that's why I didn't think it happened. But yes. uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I'm surprised at the uh, the way it was. The, you made enough of a stink that uh, you you in a roundabout way got what you wanted. It seems like everything is like. Uh, I think it's going in the right direction. And my, my big, and it might, yeah, my, yeah. yeah, my biggest issue is just being called like, like a leaker when I'm not, I'm not a game changer. I didn't sign NDAs, but your own dudes that you handpicked are leaking stuff. Yeah, like there's rats that. in that, there's rats Ooh, in that game. That's totally program. fair. And that's yeah, what annoys me can't have is that. like, I'm, I'm not going to be called. I'm not going to be called. Like, I'm not going to get stuff taken away from us, us two, us three now, you know, because of something that I like, I'm like, I didn't do anything. Like I, you know, like I don't, I you don't have care. no, there's nothing, no right to like even hold back any information. If you learn yeah. it, you, there's nothing holding you back yeah, from yeah. saying anything online. Yeah. And I, so. and I swear on my life, if, if that didn't happen months ago with that, not getting the interview, I wouldn't have leaked it. I'm just yeah. a petty, I'm just petty about it. And I, I, was being I appreciate about, the honesty was, on that. I was being a petty baby about it. And I'm like, you know what? You want to see a leak? I'll show you a leak. And like, you know, it's. It just frustrates me because I would I think it would have been a really cool podcast. And you know what? We may, we may maybe we'll be able to do it eventually. You know what I'm saying? Like he's gone on some other stuff, and that was another thing that kind of bugged me. Was I talked to Rahil and Safir, and I'm like, how hard was it to get Mike on your podcast? Oh, we just asked him. I'm like, really? Yeah, that was that's that's, true. that's interesting because like I wasn't even able to get that chance to do that. So it's just you know I don't know whatever. It's it's fine. And and like I said, like we've had some pretty big guests on here before, and I think we've handled it perfectly fine. So um, you know going oh, yeah, forward, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it's better and. You know, like I was, I, like I was honestly doing it for like the betterment of the podcast in my mind. So that's that's how I think of things. So yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> but apparently, maybe I'm trying to get, some, the, no, trying to get some. Be like, no, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna bring out. Uh, we can't bring Mike on. Papa's a Vegas Golden Knights fan. We can't mm -hmm. be on a podcast with that guy. 
Yeah, I was just trying. I was trying to get fame. I was trying to make a name for myself. I was trying to get my YouTube career started. You know, that's you were being really petty. Doing. You were being petty, yeah. and you admit it. Like, that's that's what's funny. That like that to yeah. me is hilarious. And and like I said, it's just yeah. I, I'm just yeah, for anyone whatever. wondering why I was in such a bad mood that day. Also, uh, it was like right before I went and streamed at a really just bad day, and then um, like that whole thing just didn't make it better for anyone wondering because i saw a bunch of comments being like sleeves looks like garbage on he's so mad at padre it was like i was just having a really bad day and throughout the whole stream i think i that was like the stream where i lost eight games in a row on top of it so i was just so over it. And then by the end of the stream when all that was going on and everyone's like oh my god sleeves told still i'm just like for the love of christ get me out of this stream. dude he tells me nothing i like, dude, yeah I, like i, I like, think that people I need swear. to understand this is my livelihood I don't yes. tell anyone anything. There's a reason why I don't. Tells me nothing. Exactly. And Stu doesn't even ask now. Like, I don't I do not do it. Like, I don't even care. Yeah. For, like, 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 you know what I mean? Like, because in the grand scheme of things, like, knowing the team of the year. Also, for anyone wondering if, like, that, that I've ruined my stream. Telling the players, let's be honest. Everyone, the big reason or what you want to see team of the year in that extreme and all those, that content is is how the cards are. Like, the abilities. You didn't yeah. say what, you didn't leak the show the cards. Right? That's why I didn't care about that because I knew the next day, like, we'd still get a, it'd still be a banger. And it was my best stream of the year. And it, like, it usually is. So, um, all right. That's enough drama. Let's talk about the team of the year. So, yeah. the biggest thing to come out of all of this was that clearly team of the year is picked at the end of October. Because, yes. you know what I mean? Like, we now have confirmation. And maybe they go out of their way to find a way to in, in, elongate that process. But there's no way to argue it now. Because Miro Heiskanen... So crystal clear. Was, yeah, Miro Heiskanen <laughs> was legitimately the number one defenseman in scoring from January 1st to October 31st. So, like, because yep. he's not really close-ish if you go even to, like, December 1st. Right, so that's what, he wasn't even really on the radar. I remember talking about it in my prediction, like maybe Vince Dunn or Heisken is like a super dark horse, but I never thought anything of it. So clearly that's and then Kachuk. I mean, Kachuk had a really rough start of the season. I think in his first twenty seven games, he had nineteen points. So like you know, like clearly his playoff game. So like there's no insider knowledge on that. It's just like if those are the players are gonna pick, like then clearly it is much earlier. And I don't know how they fix that. I think the only way to fix that is if. You can pick ten nominees. I said this the other like a couple other days, like other streams. Like you can you could pick ten nominees and then like ha- just make their card art. Like have yeah. their card art made. And then if they don't win, release them at like eighty sevens with like maybe triple the synergies or whatever. So at least they're somewhat useful. And they don't upgrade through the rest of the year, but like they get like the banger abilities and like the three. That'd make that might make team of the year event even more insane. Um, because it's Christmas. It'd be a lot like NHL 20, yeah. Yeah, like, it's, like, Christmas, so you have these people that can now acquire, like, you know, cards that are easier to obtain. Maybe it costs, like, five uh, Team of the Year collectibles to make one of them, and it's a nominee card. <coughs> because other than that, man, I don't know how... The, the gear and stuff is, like, sick and custom-made, and it's a marketing event. It just takes too long. I was wrong. I was under the impression it was, like, December 1st, uh, but you you were right. You you were pretty adamant that it is far earlier than that, and clearly it is. So, um, I just said that because of the gear, honestly, because I've I've ordered custom gear myself, and may, maybe you have Brent. I I don't know like what kind of stuff you have, but like goalie stuff, I know takes like a while when you order custom. And I I did it through the Blues one time, and it was it took a while, and I was like, there's no way. I understand this is, but like there's no way EA has like some kind of like priority over other people. So I was like, it probably is gonna take a while. And I thought it was pretty cool that I know this is hockey nerds out there, but. I thought it was pretty cool. They they got with Kachuk, they used his Sherwood stuff, and everyone else just had skates. I don't know if you noticed that, but like he's oh, one I didn't, of the few I didn't guys. I did see the clips. I saw the high skin in one. <laughs> so he uses Sherwood, and he's one of the few guys in the NHL does him. Yeah, there can't be very many left that uses. Yeah, Sherwood. it's all well. It's a new like it's a new Sherwood. So oh, okay. him, Byfield, and Nylander use it, and I'm, there might be like one or two more, but really? they're the main guys. Yeah, and like he's he's like obviously like popped off since he went to Florida even more. And what's funny enough about that is. I remember telling you and Brent, I was like, why did he not get it last year? He wasn't even nominated last yeah, he year. Wasn't. Him or, that, I think that him was a new team. New team. It was, mm-hmm. That was it, yeah. It was and it's funny. Team. I texted him last year when we were doing the same kind of thing, and I was like, mm-hmm. did you get the NHL team of the year? He's like, what the hell is that? I'm like, it's oh, the nominees. it's this. It's the I'm best. like, it's it's this mm-hmm. thing, and he like I'd explain it. So like this year, when I texted him, he reacted that way. That's what I knew. I was like, okay, it's legit. The high skin one, though, just like you, I was like, when I saw I'm like, well, I don't have Miro's number, unfortunately, but I was like, how do we know that's like real? It sounds so weird because I was telling like, if we, if we didn't get McCarr, Hughes or Carlson, by the way, first time 
I guess we were, we were wrong. Like, you know, they snubbed the Norris Trophy winner. First time ever. Um, but then I thought even Vince Dunn, I thought might have a it shot. It was close. Like I like Dunn, Dunn and Heiskanen were close. But yeah, if you go and look at the leading scores from first October to first, it's Heiskanen. So, so it's straight up now. We know it's like straight up on points almost too. Basically, kind of. I mean, it's always kind of been like that because even the Norris winner yeah. usually was the most, if you go back and look, like Fox had the most points in that one year. It, it, I don't know how many times that a team of the year winner has it's won. Probably it one of point. each, like the guy with the most points and the guy with like the best analytics or someone like that or the most trophies. Yeah, so. Which is, which is a, an acceptable way of doing it. Like Miro is a better in-game card to like acquire. He's going to get more, like more people are going to build him, more people yeah. are going to buy him than a Quinn Hughes. So, like, so if they want to call him, it's two righties too. Yeah, that's another thing. Did you guys... Okay, so, like, going over the cards, right? Because we haven't really gone to each one. Like, did you guys... Like, we'll start with high skin. Like, uh, you know, obviously that was, like, a surprise. But did you guys each build them? I didn't build them. So, the, I I'll, did. Okay. Yeah. Did, did you, you, build, you make all six? Hang on. Did you make good. all six? <laughs> I built five and I bought all Mark. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. So, okay, he doesn't count then. Um, as people who don't spend money on the game, what did you do? <laughs> um, I just built McKinnon because he was a unicorn in the custom stride. And I built, um, what's his face, Kachuk, because, like, I feel like he'll age well. And he's already been, since team of the year, he's been on the tear. <laughs> like, he's he's had two four-point games. Oh, um, dude, they... He scored again tonight. Like, he's going to start cooking. This is his time of year. And he's healthy now. He had, he recovered finally from the sternum thing, and he's, like, fully healthy. And I think that's part of why he kind of struggled at the beginning of the year. And their team is unbelievable. Like, they're, they're, they're on, I, th- I think they might have won the night. So, I think they might have been on a nine-game did they win the night? Oh yeah, they won the night nine games in a row. So, you know, there you go. Um, yeah, I built him, and the synergies helped a lot. And then I, I just didn't build McDavid because it. I, I actually got confirmation about this too. Um, for anybody out there that that like thinks that like oh like I gotta build him right now because it'll save me down the road, or like it's cheaper to build him right now and then I you know what I mean I won't have to keep powering him up. It it's the exact same cost. So it is front loaded cost, but you're getting like this synergies. The synergies like the, at least right, it's, right. it's bringing the 99 right now. Like you're like, okay, I want my mm-hmm. 99 speed. Or like if there's somewhere he's missing, it's a lot like, then you can easily get like your speed boost and then do yeah. else you're, things you're, elsewhere. You're, so, right. but like your total cost, it's like hundred percent upfront. Yeah. You're paying no up cost front. savings. Yeah. Yeah. You're paying up front. That's what he told me. So Wait, si- explain, explain that. What do you mean by that? Like you're paying up front. Like the the amount that you're paying up front is the same that you'd pay long term till he gets to 99. Yeah, it's like 22 collectibles are the same cost it'll be to go from 92 to 99, basically somewhere power in the ballpark ish range. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, I got that confirmed because I always thought like you okay, say yeah, yeah, yeah. again, again, again. Okay, so you're saying that the amount because it collect power, team of the year collectibles to power collectibles almost is very close in cost for EA because if you go and look at 88 gives you four, I think. Yeah. So you're saying it's that the exact equivalent. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying that the amount of team of the year collectibles that it costs now with the maxed out X factor is roughly the cost yeah. of maxing out the X factor if you were to just keep it at 92 and then go forward to 99. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he said he said it is. So I, that, because I was doing the same thing and thinking, okay, like do I have to get McDavid somehow too? And he's like, dude, if I were you, it's this, it's the same. I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah. So. What does that equal? So there's 22, and you have to go plus seven. So. Oh, I guess so. That means it's like it's like four. It's like three, three and then four, probably three and then again, four, and four, 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 five ish yeah. kind of range. But for someone Something that like, like that. for someone that does like good in champs, or I guess I don't know how squad battles works. I've never done it. So, um, champs though, like I mean, if you have like a good weekend, like Brent, right? You you get like fourteen clacks. You can just do yeah. all power ups and you're good. You know what I mean? Like it's for some people, it's easy to get power ups. Um, you know, it's 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 probably the easiest game ever to get power ups. To be honest with you. This is yeah. the easiest game ever to have a good team if you're a good, like a top player. Like you, like think, it okay, is rewarding. Like people, people have not played this yeah. game. Yeah, like, think, I think I'm a pretty good player. I go 18 wins on average per weekend, and the amount of money I've spent versus the guys that place top five or like top ten every week, they have like the same team as me, and they haven't spent any money or like maybe 200 bucks. Mm-hmm. But obviously, that is like the tiniest. That's like the point zero zero one percent. Like. Like, but it trickles well, down because that means what do you like think the... for you because like, for you you grind and you get rewarded you get every team builder right up at the beginning right yeah. when you drop you pretty much your team is like nearly maxed and yeah you're like yeah. a you're like your typical like high div two player mm-hmm. low div one player right yeah i'm so... only getting 12 to 14 hut champs wins so it's not like a super elite amount 
and I'm in Division so Two it's... rivals, so I'm not even getting like all Division One rewards. But yeah, like I can I can get like I I made three team builders or team of the years, uh, and I could make a fourth one I think, and I could buy Mario. Like I'm just gonna buy Mario, and I already have Gretzky and I have every team builder. So yeah, this is definitely I think it's because of the slower progression, uh, because you don't need to constantly chase whatever the new event is. Um, I think that the the dragged out progression, which again I I don't it's it's so funny because everyone says that it's really boring and it does. They need to figure out a way to make it more exciting. But God, man, 99 HUD is god awful. Every year we hate it. Like it, and so the fact that they're trying to keep it far from that as possible is not a bad thing. It just makes it boring in the exact same format that they've been doing for so long. They're doing so. it in the wrong way, though. Like they're not making a big enough pool of cards that are like that can go on like your team. Like Dry's yeah. Idol is not there's too many things wrong like with them like not enough face-offs not good enough so he can't play it as your center like on like a competitive team mm -hmm. which everyone realistically like everyone wants like a quote-unquote competitive team you like, yeah we're agree, saying competitive like, team yes everyone wants other team to be competitive so mm -hmm. he can't play center because he can't win face-offs because only like mm -hmm. he's in like low 80s still and then he also he's has like fast. the weak the speed his speed is still too low he's not getting cards that like artificially inflate it like say if you got like a 92 with like enforcer forward and speed boost oh that would be an interesting card but they're only dropping like, every single one of these cards drops with the same synergies every week which is not like i don't think that's what the like the original team intended to do they didn't want to necessarily have it where like no matter what they always get their same synergies every single week i think they're doing the same Whereas, ones as the build they are though that's the thing so like they all come with yeah. sniper forward and shooting boost sort of because they're snipers yes. or whatever right and like they're, they're have, i think once you get into the 90s because that's when they get like the second and third ones maybe we start seeing a little bit more um but yeah like that they've kind of backed themselves into a corner in that aspect because every playmaker has to get playmaking forward right so yeah yeah, we well, did, why do uh, they have to? Why not yeah. have it? What if a guy like like Drysdale has a good two way game? Why why can't he get defensive boost and uh, and thief or whatever, and, and he get like a plus eight in uh, in draws? You know, it'd be good. And that the was a spreadsheet center. event was good for that because like if he had like a good analytic game, like they could give him a spreadsheet card that had like higher defensive stuff, right? That yeah. that's what we stuff we talked about. Like if we're gonna be a three day content team. Um, I still, I have no issue with the three-day content team. I know a lot of people do and hate it, but like the first, the, if, when it was five days, dude, it was just 12 cards and no one gave a sh about any of them. Like, it was just cards. It was just, it was like offline challenges. They were just there to say they were there, right? But if if it's three days, and it if it was like seven or eight but amazing cards, yeah, like just yeah, make them sick. And but it's, it's like absolutely not. Mm -hmm. It is three days, and if anything, it is a more lackluster three in this three day schedule than it used to be last year in five. The real issue is live I don't moment think cards. Anybody would disagree with me on that one. Live moment cards. The issue is that with only three days, right? That means that you have to like. There's a lot of great performances every night, right? And so that means they have to limit them to really great performances. Um, but you got to make a, like a, like the, the 83 stars of the month, like we're in January, make the minimum 86 or something like, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's the, the tough part is that the lower. Why not bring up the EU cards to be like, okay, sure. Like you need your 88 range cards in order to keep like those like early -ish game players, those Christmas guys, they need their like mid tier cards in order for them to start building up their team. If you just release all like 91s then their 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 jump from base cards to like uh like to a, a 90 would be way too but like there's no you need the steps you need to be able to like okay my team is all base cards now i'm gonna get grab some 88s then i'm gonna grab a couple 90s then i'm gonna grab a couple 92s like so they still need to have like their 88 cards but what's the point in dropping an 83 thomas tatar yeah i don't know i don't know what well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it like why not like make like why not bring some of these cards to be like an 86 or like an 87 in order to make like the card actually competitive sure if, if there needs to be like if they release cards that are better they need to like the reflection on the economy might be that they oh there's too many 87s in packs well then you could obviously artificially <laughs> make it more difficult to pull all these cards so that your economy doesn't go like down the drain in january which none of us want but there's just too like, there's too many days where okay this is what I was saying in my stream um, two nights ago. There's a problem with the content if someone like me who I play 30 rivals games a week, I play 20 champs games a week, I do I basically max out on all of my stuff except for, for squad battles. I'm mean, doing that. No one does. Okay, 
I'm I just am. kidding. There's lots of squad I battles am. out there. That's fun. If you have, I'm glad you have fun. Like, I stream, I stream the damn game. I'm on a podcast to do with the damn game, but I don't tune into the daily content because it is so it's on average a waste of my time. And it's not because my team is so what gets you excited. I would love to be able to, what gets me excited would be like variety. Give me you. Okay. We can't just bitch to bitch. You got to give it. You got to give it. Like, like I said, like why not a dry idol that has like defensive boost and thief drop and even right. him labeled as a two way forward with a two way forward build. Why not a custom build on different cards? Like we, we need a bigger pool of like centers that are truly centers. Make a like a okay, let's see. Let's because I was thinking if they released different cards, like if they had a good game in a different aspect of hockey, like like say um let's go with like Brock Nelson absolutely drops like 10 hits in one game make him a like grinder build or it maybe it doesn't affect your speed if you affect the speed and you make it lower then no one's gonna take because the speed's affected but if the other stats reflect that and like he comes out with like silver truculence and like super boosts it up like checking like reasonable shooting like his speed is like maybe he gets like a speed boost in order to bring him up a little bit so that his speed is competitive then people go oh that's another card in the pool of guys that i might want to use on my team Especially for the guys like like say because right now he just got an eighty nine released, but that would at least for the guys in the mid game stage, that's a card that's usable in their top six. Like okay, I can allocate like six points to his truckling as, as like my second line right winger, like good card for that. But like we don't get that. We get like what do we have here today? What did we drop today? It it's was Thursday, bro. We didn't get anything. Oh right, we don't get anything on Thursdays. I forgot. Sorry, I don't check the. <laughs> Okay, what about like the JT Miller? Oh no! Oh, the fantasy now we're leading thing. To fantasy. Yeah, <laughs> dude, we opened the whole new book. Oh my! God. This is like. Hang on, oh. hang on, hang on. Let's finish Stephen the year first. Okay, so I made three. I made the three forwards. I made the three forwards. Stu, you might be muted, but I made the three forwards. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I made. I made the three forwards. Um, I have Makar's X Factor. That's why I didn't make Makar. And Heiskanen, the reason why I went Kachuk over Heiskanen is simply, I, I mean, I don't trust the content team to regularly update these guys because last year, remember, Team of the Year didn't get any upgrades at all. But so, why did Kachuk go back to back four point? Hey, that's so natural yeah. game, and it's just and it's just nothing. It's like I got, not, not good enough. Like I wanted okay, to address that point. You need like. You can't snub him on that. That's absolutely egregious. I get that they want to like like limit the upgrades, but that is absolute. That's ridiculously like not that you can't do that. Part of me what wonders. Does he need to do? Part of me wonders if because it's still available to be made that they can't give out his card without requiring everyone to upgrade his X factor the trade in. You know he what I mean? get team, then he better get team of the week next. So week. yeah, like, uh, like yeah, I, yeah, okay. I would be okay. willing to yes. bet McDavid just scored an unreal goal tonight that should more than likely get a play of the year card. I bet you any money at 5 p.m. when they're no longer able to be made that we're gonna get a 93 McDavid card. I got confirmed. I asked. So we should be getting Kachuk and McDavid. Then I got at 5 confirmed. PM Friday. Yes. That's so like I don't know what they would do for Kachuk because technically they missed the boat on him because he, he you know what I mean like he had eight points and a hat trick. On Saturday and Tuesday, so they like I don't know how they would be able to retroactively go back and do that. But from my understanding, the next cards for Team of the Year will be a ninety three, regardless of their prior inform. So Kachuk, his highest rated card is an eighty six. It's a prototype card. So normally in past years, his next card would be an eighty seven, and he'd have to catch up, um, which would significantly lower his value because it would take forever to get up there. But I got confirmation that, that uh, the next card is it's treated as that's the highest in form, so it'll be 93s going forward. So yeah, I, I have a, a feeling I have a feeling it is because there's maybe a technical thing. Like the set requires you to have the X factor at a certain point, right? I don't know if they can have the set require a ninety two when technically it can go to ninety three. And I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. And maybe they just don't want to have an upgrade during the week. And they just want to make it clean. I'll, I'll eat my words on that if that's the case. Like, totally 100%. Like, like that um, makes sense. I'd be willing to bet that tomorrow we get McDavid 93 for play of the year. That'd be my <laughs> guess. Be before, um, Brent, we go into the fantasy thing real quick, because that's something I, I don't know a lot of people know about. I tried um, to make it clear in a video recently, but yeah, it's okay. starting to, well, it's starting to get it, a little more traction. But yeah, I'm okay, so about. just just to help people out. But yep. um, 
like going like off of what you said, like I, I I don't know. I think I might have said this in the podcast. Maybe I didn't. I don't remember. I talk in Discord too, so who knows? I like said an example of since we have so many players that don't get cards at all, like just anybody, right? Europeans I, have got to be a little angry. Yeah, well, that's I just the mean, one like, thing that goes when the five daily content. There was always like three Europeans. I right. mean, we get the same like dude that that one European has like six cards. <laughs> I don't know if you went and looked. I, I looked at a prior video. I can't remember his name, but I'm like, man, I keep seeing this guy. I went and no, looked and he had five cards. It's like Dobson. So it's, I, I said, I'm like, you know, like I made an example for, for the Blues, right? So Marco Scandella, third pair defenseman, six foot three. If you gave him like a wacky Wednesday because he scored a breakaway goal out of the penalty box, you make him an 88 or an 87 with like high skating, whatever, and make him usable. The, people would start using stuff like that, like random cards like that. Or the guy will mm -hmm. never get a card ever in his life, like unless That's it's something point. random. That's a good you, point like, that they like pick out dudes that they're never like like on the Sharks, like Mario Ferraro. The dude, the um, the you know, like those face-off cards. They've been doing it a little bit with the prototypes, um, which I can appreciate um a little bit. Those uh, are cool, by the way. Yeah, like I I like more of that because the Ryan Reeves one, for example, the Enforcer ones. We're actually kind of Bobby cool. The, but yeah, the yep. dude, Bobby O'League is a nasty card, by the way. For anyone that's competitive that wants to go get that 86 Bobby O'League card. But um, yeah, so more more of that, but it's just so hard. Cause like if you box score watch, like you on a Tuesday night, the NHL schedule is awesome. <laughs> it's like no one plays on Mondays, but then Tuesday all there's 16 games. And it's like if you gotta go in and find go through all 16 games. Find out the big performances and then stat them out. Like, it's a long endeavor. I did it on my stream the one time. It took me, like, four hours. And that was just for one night. But that's how it should be if there's only three days of content. Because that means on Mondays you come in, there's nothing going on. And then on Thursdays, there's nothing going on. So you go and do the nights before. So, like, there should be, um, like, you know, some some time taken there. But, yeah, like, the those wacky Wednesday cards, like, were fun in that aspect. Um, I think that we should – last thing about Team of the Year um, – Actually no, I think we solved it pretty much. So yeah, I made the I made the three forwards. Yeah, we can wrap we can put a bow on that. Let's talk about the Huffers. Oh, Stewie's gonna go, Padre, blow a gasket. <laughs> go ahead, dude. Uh, um, go ahead, another dude. another. We'll get the redditors all going again. Here we go. Um, lot, saw a lot of people on there. That's I got a lot of reading on there. Never realized how active it was. Um, a lot of people are happy with it. I get it. That's fine. Um, no issue with if you want to create fantasy cards. I get it. Madden. I. I always said NHL, and this isn't not against anybody that works at NHL EA. They will follow Madden just years later and FIFA. Whatever. It's like FIFA. historically true what he's talking about. Yes. By the way, like the Madden I, team, I think works closely or like has in the past because we got X factors, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and so Derek Henry. I don't know if anybody remembers this in yeah. Madden. He had no a children. quarterback card, mm -hmm. and all the top guys used it in that Madden league. I get it. It was the meta. Um, I know, like Tage Thompson, and my, my issue with these cards is. There is no downfall to using any of them. They are some of the best cards in the game. Like Tage and, like, Tage and Weber are definitely the two best, like like among the best of their position by far. Yeah. And so that's my issue is if you're going to do something like gimmicky like this during, and this is, I know it, it, this is going to go, this is for the hockey purists and for the people that are playing competitively, like wait till after GWC to do it. Or if you're going to do it, like I talked to Brent about this, do it like in the beginning of the year, make them 84 overalls. They don't need to be, it, it kind of goes back to like the char a few years ago when he had the MSP. A lot of people bitched and said that's like way too overpowered. He's 93 speed or 94 speed. He's six foot eight or six foot set, whatever he is, or six foot nine. Nine. <laughs> yeah. And like Tate Thompson's almost like that. It's like he's six six and he has 91 Excel or 90 speed. And it's like, you know, it's a little goofy. And, you know, it, it's just like if you did a Dustin Bufflin, if you did a Brent Burns, I get it. I think that's cool because they actually did that in real life. But like these guys aren't. And if you're going to do it, like just, I, I, I wish they'd just do it like later in the year or if they're going to do it right now, then like make them have like, make Tage have like 75 agility, you know, or like cap like, him out to the mid game or something like that. So he's not on like your GWC contender teams kind of thing. It's just, I don't know. It's just a little like cringy for me. I, I don't know. I, I get it. Like, it's fun. I, I see people on there being like, Oh, we need a char goalie card. I'm like, seriously, like, come on. Like, because it gets to the point. Where it's like, why do we even have positions on any players then? Why don't we just have everybody can play anything? Let's have McDavid we on did. defense. We did. And we did. Right, like, why don't we right, just go right, back to the Once again, this is different content teams, right? So you had one that was cool with it. Then you got a new one that comes in with Hawk and them. Hawk, you know, moves on. We have a new one now. They might like it. I don't know. So I'm hoping, like, future-wise, like, we don't – personally, I, I that's my it's, – it's all an opinion. You know, you don't have to like my opinion, okay? Everyone can have their own opinion. 
if you like it, that's great. I'm happy you're having fun, whatever, but yeah. I think this highlights a unique problem because, uh, one, I can agree. I'm a traditionalist that I don't like the... I'm not a huge fan of... Dude, when I was doing the moments just to like get them, I couldn't get it in my head to make Shea Weber not bring him all the way back in the defensive zone. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't, I couldn't get it out of my head that he's supposed to play forward. So every time I grabbed him, I immediately brought him back in the zone. But on top of that, like there is never anything unique or fun about the HUD content that is new. They they really haven't done anything that is groundbreaking since seventeen. No, 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 no. Uh, the under twenty two event. In my opinion, which is probably okay. the best event ever. Mm, yeah, best yeah, event okay, ever yes. because of the time and what it introduced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, sure. Twenty two. Yeah, twenty two young, you know, exciting cards, and they it introduced the upgrade thing, right? Um, not that it was the greatest event, but what it did was like it was it was new, and but the the bigger issue that I have is that this game at the highest end is so propped up by the the NHL World Championship, and I'm the voice of it. Like I I cast it. I get to I'm going to cast it this year again, but it is crazy to me that. So much of the community doesn't realize, yourself included, how much this tournament carries the mode, which highlights a bigger issue at the high end, right? So, like, a lot of your concerns at the when new cards are released is how it's going to impact the World Championship, right? And as I've gotten worse, and as I've been just more casting the events as opposed to, like, trying to, like, you know, mold them or whatever, um, it's like, I think of it as, like, I'm just someone who plays hut. And it's like, it really doesn't impact me because you just cannot use the cards, right? I'm but, not. I'm not, by the way. So anyone yeah, that, the, yeah. the, problem, the problem is, is that when you go into Division 2 now, because there is a pretty big gap between Division 2 and Division 1, even, like, guys that could get in Division 1 last year, like, it's not easy. I'm Like, it is... I've seen dudes that are in Division 2 and they're not doing it just because they want to lose on purpose. Like, they're struggling to get the 2100. It's, um, it's a completely different game. And, like, the way that you have to play... Like, you can't use smaller people for majority as we get into june january and february and whatever and that like that isn't just from the world championship but it, it it as a content creator i hate that the lens of new content is uh, for the players that are great at the game is how is it going to impact my world championship team and like that because like that's like not as fun like again as a content creator not as a player because i understand that that's what you, the reasons yeah. of majority why you think because i i can't put my head into a casual person's brain yep. like i don't think that way what would be good for content for the casuals well like so anything so i'll give this example uh, this event as an example right this is um there has never been cards like this released since well pretty much ever except for that one bufflin and burns card that we alluded to i think that was like nhl 20 they released like a forward version when they when they lost a wacky with... wednesday last year burns yeah sure. and they it's usually burns or bufflin when they had the rights to them right but there's very few things the hut content team can do that makes stuff new like this is a tired format like there is literally it has been the same archetype of events and collectible based trade in to get whatever we used to have gold collectibles and carbon collectibles and then there was specific event collectibles and then now it went you know what i mean like it goes full circle there's only so much you can do a reinvent of the wheel so releasing these again if the if the world championship wasn't a thing is it really that big of an issue if these five players were it because the next part of my point is i hope that it stays at a very limited amount of players because like Stu said you end up with like char and net and dumb stuff like that. I guess it's kind of funny, but like, I still think this community, not the community, this player base, A skews older and B skews more to, I want the game and everything to look a lot like a real broadcast more than other sports games. I just, I, I don't know. I, I just, I mean, heck I, if I have a large, the, one of the larger audiences, I'm not a competitive player. Like Division Two, I guess, is like on the good end of the casual player, but and and I'm just older, right? So like I, I relate. I know almost all my viewers are like in their 30s. Like it's crazy. I can see my demographic, right? So like that just it just leads me to believe that the the community is a little bit older and they enjoy that kind of thing. And every time I talked about the presentation, because they did that the new like zoom in highlight goal score and they took away the normal replays, I'll, like everyone I got was like, yeah, man, like I agree. I miss the old replay system. So. I get that this made waves. If if there was no world championship, 
if these are the five cards and that's the way it is, my fear is that a lot of people enjoyed them and too much of something that you, like, I could see if they release another 10. I guarantee you there's going to be women ones for week two. Yeah, and if it's, like, one-offs, like, I yeah. don't, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't mind that, you know what I mean? It, but it is interesting, like I said, like, the, the if they release, like, let's say by the end of the year we have 25 that are, like, out of position or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Like, something that you said about the, the out-of-position guys, like, what there's no downfall to using them. Like, Tage, a way around it, Tage Thompson has 75 defensive awareness. Like, right. okay, that, like yet, you know what right. I'm saying? Like, then, okay, like, yeah, if you're yeah. going to use six foot six Tage Thompson on defense, but he's a forward, he has no defensive awareness. He's not intercepting a pass at all, right? Mm-hmm. That makes it a little bit interesting. So it's it, it depends on what route they want to go. Like, personally... Yeah. I'm kind of indifferent to it if they want to bring in like, like yeah, new, it really like, doesn't like yeah, like that's like, the thing like it isn't because you just don't use them, like don't use yeah, the cards well, that you've no compl- interest. I in, complain right? every week about being bored about the content. If they're trying to do new things like with this event, it's a step in like like hey, like, we want to try something new, and this is like their injection and see what do people think about it, and like you're, we're gonna have like like Stu doesn't like it. I personally like I'm just indifferent like whatever like sure. Like, I don't use any of them. Not because I'm like, oh, I don't want to use them because, like, I don't believe in it. But, like, I'm just, like, I'm like, ah, I don't really, like, whatever. It's not a big deal to me. Yeah, we'll see. Think, like, yeah. as, as, like, yeah, like like I said, with the, with the Huff first guys, I don't mind that it was these five. It's um, it's just, like, like I said, the, as, as we get further on, if there's just more and more coming out, like, then it's it becomes kind of lame because there's a reason why we stopped putting defensemen on the back end or forwards on the back end because what ended up happening was um, I remember my it was actually my first time ever being a game changer. Um, I went to, I think it was for NHL 19. That was the year they stopped doing it. And um, they were, like, explaining that's what they were going to do was stop the defensemen being, forwards being on defense because if you go back and look, defensemen are always statted. Either they have good skating um and good defensive stats but at the launch of the their year shooting their shooting is awful because they something has to come down for the overall to be okay right so what ended up happening was everyone just put all forwards on the back end very rarely did you actually have a defenseman play defense it was just forwards because they were able to have skating and shooting and there isn't a lot of defensive stats that mean a lot like other than defensive awareness so that was that was why they took that out and um we'll see what happens as they as they go along and uh, yeah, like the goalie one, like I don't know if I want to see a Chara net. However, the no, FIFA, the reason, don't. the reason, yeah. uh, like why this is such a weird hot topic is because in Madden FIFA, my understanding, it's like two of the most popular events. Which yeah. again might be just a different. Hey, in, it's a business. They got to make yeah. money. I don't care. You know, do whatever you guys. No, gotta from do a player money. base, like a from like a yeah. People I, enjoying I'm just it. saying, like you know, I I just I like, I get it. It's ultimate team. I mm-hmm. get, it. but at the same time, like. I, I don't know. It, it's it's a it's a it's just an opinion. Whatever. I mean, you have you can be both sides. It's, there's nothing wrong. It's like being a Republican or a Democrat. You're gonna have two different things. Who cares? It's it is what it is. We all have different opinions. I'm just saying. I just I personally like like the normal positions for the guys. And if you want to do fun events like that, that's great. Do it. I just wish it'd be like after this the biggest tournament. And um, no, I and like do like I because I understand that because a large portion of the community actually still plays for that and like that's what the, the biggest thing is is like. You know, because it's for a lot of money, and like people play this game a lot competitively, and they take it seriously. It's just <coughs> majority of the people don't care. And, yeah. No, I get it. Yeah, and um, it's, it's that's for, what it's it's for fun. About. The um, all right, let's talk about the All Star Open real quick before they yep. round things out. Um, so the All Star Opens, and it's the top eight on each console this week. It's like a hut champs kind of thing, twenty five games. Um, and dude, my favorite time of the year. So the World Championship, the one thing for anyone that doesn't play in the World Championship, the best time of year to watch competitive player streams because today we got a heck of a good one. Whenever two of the biggies match up and every loss means so much, like potentially means going to these lands and playing on the main stage and all of that, um, it just is hilarious. So um, I'm not allowed to compete in it. I'll be at the event. So if the first one is the All-Star Opens, 25 games. It operates like Hot Champs. And uh, the top eight on each console will make a playoff next week, I believe, from my understanding. Or maybe it's two weeks from now. How is your? How have you done in it? And what's the status? And and where do you? You know, how how is it going? I'm still zero and zero. Basically, as soon as we're done the podcast, I'm gonna hop in and try and rip through twelve games. So. Oh my god. Okay, Stu. I'm seven and as as we speak. Okay. 
I think we yeah. have to go like 24 and one at the like 20. You might have to go 25 and 0. I was looking at it's like some of the guys' records. This guy's already with L's like really early into their run. I don't know if you it's going to so, be. Eh? I think it might. It, I think 23 and two with good points gets you in. Really? Like, you think be, you like, have two L's? I think so. Huh. But you got, you got a good points. I think 23 and two is going to be a split. There's realistically, I bet. Um, Three people go twenty-five and zero on. I'm because I only think about Xbox because I want to see Xbox leaderboards. So on Xbox, I bet twenty. I bet three people go twenty-five and zero. I bet uh, three people go twenty-four and one, if not maybe less. I bet two people go twenty-four and one, and I bet there's like six twenty-three and twos. Because the thing, okay, what people don't realize is that in uh, GWC versus Hut Champs, when you go into Hut Champs and you're zero and zero, it actually takes your rivals. Um, your rivals score like your um, is that confirmed yeah it's i did not know that so when you uh load into a hut champs it takes it into an account a little bit so like think about in gwc when you load into like your first gwc game it's like some like like bot it's like some guy that's oh it, the yeah game. It's like, like yeah it's because it doesn't take into account any of the rivals score it's, it's purely no everyone's based. on the same playing field but which also means, though, that you're going to get the RNG of some guys in the first 10 are going to have, like, a free first 10, whereas other guys might have, like, like super bad luck, and they run into three other top players in their first 10, and they take a couple Ls. That's, like, the kind of the caveat and the difference. Which, like, it's, it's going to be, like, so difficult. But like, for, like, these guys, I mean, unless you're West, of course, because, like, West guys, you know, they're all terrible. So it's just going to be Benny and Sap going through no matter what. But... I'm interested to see with it being top eight. It's just gonna be like a bloodbath on Sunday. It's so that's funny, my guess. Man. Like I said, watching uh, Duncan Delhi, he took on Loco Krusty, is like becoming one of the more known players of the high end. He's definitely a hut hero. Hasn't won an esports event yet, but like, has beaten enough people regularly to start where he's like making a name. And uh, that's the one thing I like is I like new players coming up and like making these lands like Sky is taken, who is I'm sure that anyone that is in Division two or Division one does not want to match up with him or that has because he's like 390 and five, um, for example. So Delhi and him, that was a great game. Like it is hilarious watching these guys and there's no stress on you. That's the best part of watching these things. So if you struggle and you want to see like two guys just sweat and play the most intense game that you'll ever see, you got to take a look at Twitch during uh, during these uh, tournaments and now that the all star once the all star game one is done the club champion championship starting it's like literally multiple every weekend so uh, as we are we are we taking all those off brent i think we're on the same page on that one i think we i don't think we're gonna have any time to get them done that's gonna be tough yeah people with lives the club championship <laughs> phase is literally in my opinion i i can't stand the format like for that stuff i get it you want to get the teams involved but dude i represented the blues um three two 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 for sure times and I literally was their emergency goalie and skate with them and never got anything at all from them. Never even got a tweet or anything. So the whole being like, oh, you're representing a team, that that's such a big deal. There's only like five teams that care. And it's because they're into video games. The other 30 teams or whatever, 20 some teams, they don't care. So that's what's like, it's a little bit overblown. I wish the club championship aspect, I hate it because it's like a five plus hour process on a Saturday. And if you're me and Brad, didn't they split it any... up last year? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't, I actually don't. It depends remember. how it's set up. If it, if it's if it has more than X amount of people, it, it's two days. It's Sunday and Saturday. But um, it's like two hours each day, right? Because I saw. I it's don't two think hours. it's two hours oh, each more day. than that. Oh, because okay. it's bo it's bo threes, two single limit. And like, right? dude, and you know how this works, man. This oh, website, I do know. Yes, yeah. telling you right now, this rivals website, this new website, whew, it's a little rough because to message people. They'll be like, hey, you're on PlayStation, Brent. Uh, make the password this. It's hard to figure out how to message people. It's it's kind of messy. It's going to take a while. Yeah, for, yeah. And again, it's the first year of it, right? So there's definitely going to be some kinks. I just wish they go back to four open play weeks. Um, I, I mean, do think just there's... keeping it straight in the game. Isn't that what they did? Did they keep it in the game? Yeah, in, in the game. In the game. I wish they do four open play weeks because you want to keep the game involved. I get the whole pack thing. Um, but I do think there's a good chance from what it sounds like. I was talking to the guy at GWC about this. That we will have hopefully because he was wanting it this year he asked them to put in combined leaderboards hopefully next year we'll have it that'd so be that, huge that, that, that would be massive. huge that'd be huge for hut champs and all that stuff and it'd be fun too it'd be way more fun all right fellas well a lot to unpack in that episode 
Uh, next week, we will have um, some more stuff to talk about. Padre, you want to leak the women's team of the year? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hillary Knight, I know for sure got it. By the way, there is a dude Wait, on Wait, actually? This is... There, no, there's a dude on Reddit, and this this is like look, this is probably where the game changer got it from. Really, honestly, he claimed he got it from someone else. But whatever. There's this dude on Reddit that like called a Bobby Orr event before Bobby Orr even got like. I because, saw like, that. You, I saw that. Because dude. like you, you were even like, holy crap, they got Bobby Orr. I was like, you didn't know about. It? He's like, no, I didn't know. I'm like, dude, like that's crazy because none of us knew about Bobby Orr. Then he called the whole women's team of the year, and then the, now the um, EA is told like whoever runs the Reddit thing like take like take this guy out because he's. He's clearly like leading stuff. I messaged him. I'm like, dude, who are you? And like, how do you get this stuff? He's like, oh, my dad used to work at EA or uh, my, my mom's new boyfriend used to work at EA. That's what he told me. And he's like, and he just tells me stuff. That's he's, wild. He's, I've, he says, uh, he says that he says that he knows, he says he knows guys that still are there and they tell him stuff. That's what he told me. That's now, the obvious know. answer is there is a, there's just, there's a leaker. A disgruntled just employee. Can't, like just, that just can't help himself. But just tell people things, you know, and eventually here's the thing too. Like, I'm assuming the person that is doing the leaks is going to end up watching this. You got to be careful, man. People, like you might think that your buddies are like, oh, like yeah, I'm not going to tell anybody your name will get out there, man. It's going to circle around 2024. And you're going to lose your position, man. Like you need, like you need to chill out and just like, there's a reason why you signed an NDA. You need to respect it. It's yep. absolutely silly, man. Like, there's a reason why sleeves do it. We're like, Stewie and I are close to sleeves. We do the, like behind the scenes. Like, we're all buddies. He doesn't tell us anything. Which honestly, we don't ask him because it's ridiculous. So why would we? Hey, sleeves, come on, man. Just n nudge, nudge. Tell me stuff. Tell me something. Because you know what? It would get out that we that he's the one leaking. And dude. It's gonna happen. Your name's gonna get out there, and you're gonna get in shit. Yep. So I would, I don't know, to that guy, smarten up. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Don't. No, I thought it was. I just thought that was funny because like people are like, I didn't. Like, I wasn't the only one that said the team. Yeah, that dude said it too. So that was a wild did it on events as well. So, all right, fellas. Well, we'll talk to you next week. Have a good one.